Yes, this Tory shot me. You said I got shot in my foot and it didn't hit no bones or tendons. This was one of them times where it was like, it shouldn't have got this crazy. Why you lying on that boy? Is it the truth or a lie? One night, it's something so out of character. Uh, does not judge an entire person's life. I was really scared because I had never been shot at before. I just want you to know, bro. You're just so drunk. You even know what the f was going on, bro. Tory Lanez is going to prison for a long time after shooting Meg the Stallion. Even though he and his team have tried to discredit Megan, the evidence proves that he committed the crime and shot her in the foot after a party in the Hollywood Hills. Now his family blames the system for being corrupt after Tory was sentenced to 10 years in prison. So let's get into it. Tory Lanez has been sentenced to 10 years in prison for shooting Megan the Stallion. This has been a controversial case because some people are on Tory's side, others are on Megan the Stallion's side. And I understand why it's complicated because when Megan first went to the hospital, she told them that she wasn't shot in the foot, that, you know, there was some glass or something else that had happened to her. So she's had to go back on her original statement to clarify that, yes, Tory Lanez shot her in the foot after a party at Kylie Jenner home. Tori was charged with assisting with a firearm, having a loaded unregistered firearm in a vehicle, and discharging a firearm with gross negligence. We're here to talk about Daystar Peterson, also known as Tony Lannis, who was sentenced to 10 years in prison for the July 12, 2020 attack on Megan Pete, also known as Megan the Stallion. Over the past three years, Mr. Peterson has engaged in a pattern of conduct that was intended to intimidate Ms. Pete, silence her, uh, and keep her from defending and bringing her truth out. Despite the physical violence, verbal attacks, and attempts at public humiliation, Ms. Pete remained strong and shared the events of that faithful night with the jury and the world. The fact that Ms. Pete is a successful entertainer has brought the spotlight on the important issue of violence against women. This is an interesting case because typically in our society nowadays, we stand with victims, but a lot of people, they don't see Megan the Stallion as a victim. And that's partly because Tory Lanez hasn't gotten himself in too much trouble in the past. Actually, the judge said that sometimes good people do bad things, calling Tory a good person. Actions have consequences and there are no winners in this case. Meg testified that Tory fired the gun at the back of her feet and shouted for her to dance as she walked away from an SUV in which they had been riding in in July 2020 after leaving a pool party at Kylie Jenner's home. She had to have surgery to remove the the bullet fragments, but Meg was quoted saying, since I was viciously shot by the defendant, I have not experienced a single day of peace. Slowly but surely, I'm healing and coming back, but I'll never be the same. And I'm going to read a portion of the statement that she made to the court, because I think it drives home what she has enduring, what she's trying to do. And I say, on quotes, every day, I think of others across the world who are victims of violence and survive. It is truly the most powerless feeling, especially when you question whether the justice system can truly protect you. Fortunately, the district attorney's office fought for me. I'm incredibly grateful to them and the jury for the attention to the evidence and siding with the truth. But it can happen, if it can happen to me, imagine those who lack the resources and support systems to help them." Unquote. Tory Lanez fought hard not to go to prison. He was quoted saying, if I could turn back the series of events that night and change them, he probably would. The victim was my friend. The victim is someone I still care for to this day because keep in mind, they were kind of like dating at this point. He added, everything I did wrong that night, I take full responsibility for. So it almost seems like he's admitting to what Meg is saying. Either way, Tory was stunned while the sentence was being read, but he had no audible reaction. His family 
and friends in the courtroom also remained quiet after the sentencing. Before the sentencing, Tori's father choked back tears about how the rapper's mother died when he was just 11 years old, just days after she first showed symptoms of a rare blood disorder. Quote, I don't think anybody ever gets over that, he said of their youngest child, whose legal name is Daystar Peterson, but his music became his outlet. There was also a statement from the mother of Tori's youngest son, who spoke in court about his qualities as a father. Dozens more wrote letters to the judge, including rapper Iggy Azalea, who asked the judge to hand down a sentence that was transformative, not life-destroying. Tori's supporters packed the courtroom. During the trial, they contended that his prosecution was unjustly brought on by Megan and powerful figures in the music industry. After the verdict was read in December, Tori's father denounced the wicked system that led to his son's conviction. Tori has now been placed into jail, and actually someone from the jail claims that Tori has been leading the daily prayer groups and has eased tensions in the protective custody unit where he's been held. I just stood here in this Los Angeles County and witness the worst miscarriage of justice yes. that this world has yes. ever seen. Yes. You wanna know how I feel? Oh, I'll tell you exactly how I feel. I got some names that I wanna call. Alex Spiro, Desiree Perez, and the whole Rock wicked Nation. system of Rock Nation, yep. including you, Jay-Z. Yes. Yes. You who yes. say yes. you rose from the gutter, yes. but you have traded and bartered the souls of young men. The only independent witness in this courtroom is a man whose name is Sean Kelly. He came to court and our attorneys, he would not even shake their hand after he went upstairs with Kathy Ta and Alex Bart. They met on Saturday before. They met, they on met with our Saturday witness night. and then the man came back. So clearly his father is upset and he claims that there's some coercion between the witnesses and Megan's lawyers. Lawyers argued Megan's testimony that Tori urged her not to go to the police because he was on parole and would be in serious trouble, which was both untrue and an improper allowance of prior bad acts. While Tori's lawyers plan to appeal the conviction, it's not looking good, especially because Meg isn't doing well. I mean, this deputy district attorney was quoted saying she has permanent scarring physically and she certainly will have emotional scarring for the rest of her life and it wasn't just that he shot her but i mean megan's name has been dragged through the mud and there are so many enemies now in the music industry because of this situation quote not only did the defendant do the heinous act of shooting her he then subjected her to two and a half years of hell but it looks like 10 years may not be that bad because the charges carried a maximum sentence of 20 22 years. Prosecutors requested a 13-year sentence, noting in a sentencing memorandum that Tory re-traumatized Meg the Stallion with his social media posts about the trial, which ultimately led to his followers targeting her. This entire situation has also led to the possibility of Tory being deported back to Canada. Like any human being would be incredibly sad and down, uh, knowing that he's not going to be around his child for such an extended period of time and knowing that he's not gonna be able to uh, be there for the countless number of people who are dependent upon him. Look, even if you want to believe that he's guilty of these charges, one person, one night and, and something so out of character uh, does not judge an entire person's life. Either way, he's not going to jail for two decades, and honestly, I doubt he'll be deported because of how much money he makes out here. I mean, he's a hardworking person. His expensive lawyers are fighting for a shorter sentence, arguing that he can just go on probation, he could be released from jail into a residential substance abuse program. They claimed that Tory has alcohol abuse disorder, anxiety, and PTSD from the unexpected death of his mother when he was 11. Prosecutors said that they were skeptical of those claims because they weren't presented throughout the trial. And they actually argue that this case has nothing to do with mental health. He shot Meg because she bruised his ego. Tory's team did make some content to present in court. Actually, his lawyers played a lengthy video showing footage of his charity work and family life, which Meg's lawyers claim it looks like an award for 
former man of the year than a misogynist and coward convicted for shooting an innocent woman. Quote, Tory Lanez is not the victim in this story. Even though his team and himself has tried to make the world believe this. I mean, through his social media posts and him rallying up his fans, he's tried to make it seem like he's a victim of the system when in fact he shot someone, which is just never okay. And keep in mind that these two were arguing and he told her to dance bitch. I remember he said like dance bitch. And she was leaving the SUV when he decided to shoot her in the foot. She went to the hospital and said that it was glass, but they could tell it was bullet fragments. Everything happens so fast. And all I hear is this man screaming is he said dance bitch. And he starts shooting and I'm just like, oh my God. <laughs> Like he shot a couple of times. Mm -hmm. and I, I so was is so he scared. in the car shooting from the car? I do think that Meg actually really cared for Tori. I mean, they were pretty much full on dating. So maybe in that moment, she was trying to protect her man because she couldn't even comprehend that he would go off and shoot her. She was quoted saying, you think I'm about to tell the police that we, us black people, have a gun in the car? You want me to tell the law that we've got a gun in the car so they can shoot us all up? She also is left with permanent physical damage, which if you guys know Meg, she's known for her knees and her twerking, but she claims that she couldn't walk for a while. I still have nerve damage. I can't really feel the side of my left foot. The back of my feet are always sore, but I'm pushing through it. Meg also told the court that Tori offered her $1 million to keep quiet about the shooting, which is like kind of like chump change when you're that big and that successful. I mean, a million dollars, I mean, if she could dance properly, she probably could make that in one night. Tori actually dedicated an entire album to rebuting her version of events and did not testify at trial. So he can go and write an entire album about this and defend himself and try to discredit Megan, but yet in court, he's not going to go and speak and tell his own story which i think shows how guilty he is so obviously megan is relieved that tori has gone in trouble and there is some justice served she wrote in a statement i struggle with being present after everything that occurred i cannot bring myself back to being in the same room with tori i've been tormented and terrorized he paid bloggers to disseminate false information he treated my trauma like a joke when i could have been dead he blamed the system blamed the press and as late he's been using his childhood trauma to justify his actions slowly but surely i'm healing but I'll never be the same. His crime warrants the full weight of the law. I don't want to call myself a victim. As I reflect on the past three years, I view myself as a survivor because I have truly survived the unimaginable. Not only did I survive being shot by someone I trusted and considered a close friend, but I overcame public humiliation of having my name and reputation dragged through the mud by an individual for the world to see. It was more than just a vindication for me. It was a victory for every woman who has been shamed, dismissed, and blamed for a violent crime committed against them. And like I said, I really do believe these two had a close relationship, which is why Meg probably feels so betrayed. And maybe Tori was so drunk to the point where he thought that was okay, but I, I can't even imagine being that drunk. I mean, who drinks like that? Megan was quoted saying, I thought we had a real connection. She believed she and the rapper bonded over the mutual loss of their mothers, which keep in mind, I believe Megan maybe lost both of her parents, which I remember seeing a live stream where she was super emotional, just like wishing she had her parents there because she's going through all of this. Well, I never put my hands on this man. I never did anything to him. There was an argument. People argue every day. Friends argue every day. There was an argument in the car? It, it was an argument because I was ready to go and everybody else wasn't ready to go. Mm -hmm. But that's like normal friend yes. stuff. Like, yeah. we fuss about silly, silly stuff all the time. Mm -hmm. I never put my hands on anybody. I never raised my voice too loud. Like, this was one of them times where it was like... It shouldn't have got this crazy. It shouldn't have escalated to right. the way that it did. So I get out the car and it's like everything happens so fast. Yeah. And it does seem like the recovery process was tough for Meg because she went through this traumatic moment and then she's just stuck inside. Quote, what nobody knows is that I had to get surgery the same night. I stayed in the hospital in California for maybe four days. Then I was in New York for a while. Both my legs wrapped up. I could not walk. I still have bullet fragments in my feet right now. I was very scared that I would not be able to be Meg the Stallion anymore. She began physical therapy in New York before traveling to Tampa, Florida, where she regained the ability to walk. She's still 
still processing her feelings. Quote, I feel shame a little bit because even after he shot me, I was still thinking about everyone else in the car. Quote, I thought everybody in the car was my friend. And that whole time, that's not how they thought of me. That's what really hurts. I, I was so is so he scared. in the car shooting from the car? Megan? He is he? standing up over the window okay. shooting. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even want to move. I didn't want to move too quick. Like, cause I'm like, oh my God, if I take the wrong step, I don't know if he can shoot something that's like super important. I don't know if he could shoot me and kill me. Like, Were you afraid for your life at that I time? I was really scared cause I had never been shot at before. What's even crazy about this situation is that after she was shot, she was still in the car with Tori. I don't know if he was trying to take her to the hospital or at this point he was trying to give her the $1 million so that she would shut up and wouldn't tell anyone. But that's why she, I guess, was scared to tell the police that there was a gun in the car because they were driving around. Police got a description of the vehicle. They located it and found Tori and Meg there. On July 12, 2020, Megan Thee Stallion and Tori Lanes were leaving Kylie Jenner's house party with one security guard and Megan's best friend, Kelsey. The four of them were in the car, an argument broke out, which led to cops being called, helicopters flying in, and finding Megan Thee Stallion bleeding from her feet. She was taken to the hospital, and the other four were taken to jail. Megan originally told police she stepped on glass, so the situation was calm and police wouldn't harm them, but later came out and said that Tory Lanez shot her. You shot me, and you got your publicists and your people going to these blogs, lying and shit. You shot me! I ain't get cut by no glass, but there's a witness. Megan showed text stories on her where he seemingly admitted to shooting her because he was too drunk and caught up in the moment. The entire scene is super dramatic. I mean, keep in mind, we've had the Black Lives Matter movement, which really put a lot of tension between like black people and police. And I mean, I'm scared of police just as a gay man because where I grew up, they weren't friendly to us either. So, I mean, I totally get it. And in this moment, she's like, there's helicopters, there's police asking what's going on. Her feet are bleeding. It's a really hard scene to watch. Honestly, good for Megan for being strong enough to continue standing up for herself because she wasn't quiet. Less than two weeks after the incident, Megan went on Instagram Live and said she was shot in both of her feet and had to get surgery to get this crap taken out. At this point, she didn't mention the shooter but shared that she was traumatized by the situation. Since y'all so worried about it, yes, this Tory shot me. You shot me. And you got your publicists and your people going to these blogs, lying and shit. Stop lying. Why lie? I don't understand. I tried to keep the situation off the internet, but you dragging it. You really dragging it. I'm glad she went live and just told everyone the truth because I feel like if I had a major issue, I'll, I'll just be going live and just spilling it all. Fans online quickly made a mockery of Megan through memes and tweets. They doubted if she was really shot, defended Tori, and ridiculed her confession. Meg claims that she was just trying to get home after that party and that when the police arrived, the officer was really aggressive. Even though he shot me, I tried to spare him. Tori denied shooting Meg before and after her August 2020 IG accusation. In September 2020, he released Daystar, an album that included Money Over Fallouts, a track which he accused Megan of trying to frame him and that she had the nerve to write that statement on an affidavit knowing that he didn't do anything. The entire album was Tori's response to the accusations and many critics refused to review it. She knew she had to do certain sympathetic things, I, I guess, to push the narrative. And I don't know who told her to do certain things like that and i'm not the one who's trying to like ever point the finger at anybody but when it really comes down to it it's like you went on live on your birthday and then you said on my birthday and then you said i got shot in my foot and it didn't hit no bones or tendons 
Tori says that he still has feelings for Meg, but if he truly cared about her, he wouldn't have released an entire project attempting to make money off of her trauma. Complex wrote, Tori Lanez released a 17-track tirade exploiting Megan's pain, all in hopes to salvage his career and win favor from men who are just as fragile as him. Meg would initially deny having a relationship with Tori beyond a friendship. However, in the 2022 trial, she would admit that she and Tori were involved sexually. Meg was quoted saying that there was this whole story about who she's having with and I don't understand why that matters. Quote, it's disgusting at this point. How can I share my body with someone who could shoot me? When did Megan the Stallion lied about with sleeping him? with Tori Lanes. Like, yeah, yeah. Did you have, <laughs> did you Megan? Did you have a sexual <laughs> relationship with Tori Lanes? Yes, that's my question. Um I didn't have a sexual relationship with Tori. Now, since Tory Lanez has been locked up, he has been making some phone calls. And actually, Tory called Meg Thee Stallion's ex-friend, Kelsey Harris, and this call has leaked a week after Tory was found guilty. A YouTuber actually leaked the audio of Tory's call to Megan's former friend and assistant. Kelsey was actually there in the car that night, so she saw what had happened. I don't quite understand why she's an ex-friend at this point, but I don't think she supported Meg. Kelsey, how you feeling? Thank you. Kelsey, why you shoot that girl? So this call hasn't happened like after the sentencing. This call actually happened way before the sentencing, but it's been leaked now that he's been in jail. This person tweeted, I can easily confirm that the audio floating around of Tory Lane's jail call to Kelsey, the gunshots and Kelsey's interview with prosecutors are authentic. Court can release exhibits after trial. And that's what happened here. I don't have my own copies yet, but I will soon. And they're right. After a trial, they can release the exhibits and show everyone what they've been reviewing Viewing, which may not have been public because it could, you know, roll up the public people and then, you know, everyone will come to their own conclusion. So they keep this evidence secure and private so they can actually use it in court. You guys have to pay attention. Like, I knew this was going to happen. This is just the beginning, y'all. I know y'all want me to talk, but this is just the beginning. So, like, when it's my turn, just know I'm going to break everything the f down. Okay. And we're going to see who really look bad in the end. First off, Tori begins to apologize for the situation, blaming his actions for being drunk. Bruh, I know Meg probably will never ever talk to me again, but I just want you to know, bruh, I was so effing drunk that I didn't even know what the F was going on. He said, I feel like, I feel crazy, but in the state, like, what happened, what happened? I can't take it back, but I'm just telling you I'm sorry. I think I was just too drunk. When I got to the house, I assure you, they gave me like five shots off the door. I was out of there. He even admits that he doesn't recall what the argument was about that took place between himself and Meg that led to this shooting. Here's a snippet of audio from that call between Tori and Meg's friend, Kelsey. Peter, something like that, Peter. You know, you know, bro. Sure. Regardless, I know she probably never ever gonna talk to me ever again, but, bro, I just want you to know, bro, I was just so f drunk. I didn't even know what the fuck was going on, bro. That I didn't even know what the fuck was going on, bro. Like that, I never do some shit like that, bro. Just a, a guy just so fucking drunk. I just didn't even understand what the fuck was going on, bro. Like, so I, whatever. Yeah. Bro. But you know, regardless, that's not gonna make anything right, and that's not gonna make my actions right, bro. But I'm just deeply sorry, bro. I never even moved like that, bro. Like. At this point, Meg, I believe, was still in the hospital. Tori asks for a third time which hospital Meg is at, and then Kelsey shares that she was at Cedar Medical. The artist continues to jump topics, asking Kelsey to contact his security to help him get out of jail. Kelsey replies by saying that they are mutually concerned and they want to help him get out of jail, but quietly. Tori adds that he doesn't think Meg will receive backlash and that the blame will fall on him. Well, hmm, you're kind of right there. This person tweeted, watching Tori Lane's 
fans defend him even after this cause leaked is truly baffling. Only a complete idiot is going to admit to shooting her over a jail phone. He knew the call was being recorded. He apologized. He said he wouldn't have done it if he hadn't been drunk. So at this point, they were holding Tori and those other people in the car to figure out exactly what had happened. And he's trying to get the hell out of there. Now, Megan is saying that less than two days after the shooting incident, Kelsey met up with Tori Lanes, And from that moment on, she never wanted to talk about the case. She's saying that during that meeting, Tori Lanes promised Kelsey that he'll invest in her business, do a little this, do a little that, you know, give her some hush money. And Megan just feels slighted by Kelsey because from that day on, she never cleared up anything about the shooting incident. So Kelsey posted this to her Instagram story, pretty much saying, when people can't control you, they try to control how people view you. And she actually posted this like on June 7th. So I guess she was trying to give us a little heads up that an article like this was gonna be coming down the pipeline. This person tweeted, after hearing the Tory Lanez apology call from jail, I need to hear the people who were loud about condemning Meg to have an equally loud apology. Y'all need to be hashtagging, I'm sorry, Megan. I'm, I'm gonna apologize to Megan this time. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I said some things, but and it was because on social media I posted things that when she said uh, she was with Gail and she said that uh, she said were you intimate with Tory Lanez and she said uh, what and then it was like no and I was like ah oh, she lying mm -hmm. at that part I knew she was that, she's lying there wouldn't be no reason for me to be around each other and then uh, um, from that it felt like she was lying to me you know what I'm saying so I was like little things would pop up and I wasn't being supportive of it. Right. You were a little more vocal. Yeah. And the only reason why I, I felt like, you know, at some point you should apologize. I should apologize to us because um, when I heard the uh, the phone call conversation. Yeah. That that made me feel like, oh, shit. <laughs> now I know what, the, what happened. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, Either way, justice was served. And to be honest, you know, I don't want to like push my public opinion, but I do believe Meg. I mean, I just don't think that she would make this up. You, what, you think she shot herself? Like, seriously. So I do think Tori is guilty here. He even admits that he doesn't even know what happened. He was so drunk and he really dug his own grave with that call. I mean, I, I think once you like shoot someone, you're pretty much like going to get in trouble. There's really no way escaping that, especially at this celebrity status. But he tried his best and he tried to ruin her reputation but either way he's gonna be behind bars now so i want to hear what you guys think in the comments below here's my email and i'll see you in a new video soon bye guys